Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new to the series, the idea is to get viewer suggestions, pick one at random, and show you guys how to create the game mechanic. It is worth mentioning that I do it all in real time. Is it optimized? No. Is it the best way to do it? Probably not. Will it work as intended? Well, that's the goal. Anyways, it appears today we will be creating a 2D grappling hook. This suggestion comes from Digital Oddities, who just put grappling hook in all caps. So now that we know what we are doing, let's head over to Unity and try and make something cool. Okay, in our Unity project, I have created a new folder called Episode 7 Grappling Hook and a new scene called Episode 7 and just loaded that up. And all we have is a main camera and it's a completely empty scene. So let's right click, create a 2D sprite and let's create a square and let's name it to player. And next we're going to add a component and let's add a box collider 2D. And the next thing we're going to do is just duplicate this player and let's name it to ground. And let's grab the ground, drag it down, scale it. And now we have a nice ground. Let's click back on our player, add a new component and let's add a rigid body 2D. And this is just going to be the basis so we can fall onto our ground and have some collisions. The next thing we're going to do is add a new component and we're just going to add the player controller. And this player controller was made in episode one and all it does is just make it so we can move left and right. I'm going to use transform movement and I'm going to put the move speed to something like three. And let's just hit play and make sure everything works as intended. Our player falls, collides with the ground, and I can move left and right. Okay, this is going to be a good base for our grappling hook. Let's exit out of play. And in order to use the grappling hook, we should probably duplicate the ground and put it above the player. That way he has something to grapple onto. We can probably do something later on where there's some spikes on the ceiling or something along those lines, but for now let's just do a flat ground on the top. Okay, with all that done, let's come down to our project window, right click, create a new C Sharp script, and let's call this grappling hook. And with our script now created, let's open it up in VS Code. All right, now that we're in VS Code, let's explain exactly what we're going to be doing. So a very easy way that we can create a grappling hook is by using something called a joint. So all the joint is going to do is try and maintain a distance between A and B while allowing for some sort of rigid body movement. And in fact, it's going to produce a very rope-like type effect just straight out of the box. So we might as well just use that as it'll make things a little bit easier. So how the grappling hook is going to work is we're going to take our cursor and we are going to click somewhere on the ceiling. We're going to check and see what layer the ceiling is on and if it's grappleable or not. And if it is grappleable, we're going to move the player up towards that direction a specific length, however long we want the rope to be. If we want it to be pretty much on the mark, we keep that length down. And if we want him to be, I don't know, pretty far in, kind of doing some sort of heist, dropping down on the grappling hook, well, then we would just make that length a little bit longer. And we could also control that through the code to create some interesting circumstances in whatever gameplay that you're going to be making. So let's just jump into the code and start setting things up. So the first thing we're going to need is a serializable field. And let me just tab this over and private float. And we're going to do a grapple length. And the next thing we're going to need is some sort of grapple layer so we know we can actually grapple onto it. Drive it to the layer mask. And we're going to do grapple layer. And then we're going to need some sort of a grapple point. So let's make a private vector three and let's call it a grapple point. And then we're going to need our joint. So let's do private. Let's use a distance joint 2D. So it'll just try and maintain some sort of distance. And let's just call it joint. All right, with that all set up, let's go into start. And the first thing we're going to need is some sort of reference to our joint. So let's get that now. Joint equals game object. Dot get component. 
And let's get the distance joint 2D. And what we're going to do is just quickly disable that joint when we enter the game. Because we're not going to have any sort of grapple point right away. We're going to have to get that in update. So let's do that now. Let's say if input dot get mouse down. And this will be when we click down. And we're going to say zero for our left click. And now we're going to do a raycast. So raycast hit 2D because we're doing a 2D raycast. And let's call it hit equals physics 2D dot raycast. And we're going to do something a little bit interesting here, which I like to think is a little bit better practice. We are going to space this. And we're going to come above here and we're going to start setting all of our info for our raycast. As you can see, we have a bit of an error and that's just because we don't have any of our arguments for the raycast. So let's start by saying the origin and let's do camera dot main dot screen to world point. And inside here, we're going to do input dot mouse position. And all this is going to do is just take the coordinates of where our mouse is on the screen and transfer them into world coordinates. The next thing we need is a direction and we don't really need a direction. So we're just going to say vector 2.0. And then the next thing we're going to do is give a distance. So let's say distance is equal to math f dot infinity. And last but not least, our layer mask is going to be the grapple layer. And all this does is just separate everything, make it look all nice, and we can actually see what our origin, direction, distance, and layer mask is. The problem is there's usually a lot of overloads, and overloads can get a little complicated, especially when you're dealing with multiple things. So I like to just specify what each thing is. The next thing we're going to do is just come down here and say if hit.collider is not equal to null. And all that's going to do is so when we click on, let's say, the ceiling, we can now assign our grapple point there because we know it actually exists. So grapple point is now equal to hit.point. And let's just make sure our grapple point's Z position is zero because we're dealing with 2D. So grapple point dot Z is zero. And now we can actually do things with our joint. So the first thing we're going to do is set our connected anchor for our joint. So let's say joint dot connected anchor is equal to our grapple point. And all that's going to do is just set the anchor of our grappling hook. So if the anchor is here, our character will be here and we'll be able to swing. So next we're going to say the joint is now enabled because we want to be grappling. And the distance is equal to our grapple length. And that's just going to control back in that example. It's just going to control the distance of that rope. So the next thing we're going to do is say if we release the left click of our mouse. So if input dot get mouse up and zero for a left click. If we release the mouse button, we're just going to disable the joint. So joint dot enable is equal to false and that's basically it so let's save that up and head back into unity in unity i'm going to click on my player scroll down and we're going to add in that joint so it's a distance joint 2d and let's just make sure we set everything up so we're not going to want auto configure distance and we're going to enable collisions so the next thing we're going to do is just come up to our project window and drag the grappling hook onto our player so we have a grapple length and let's just set this grapple length to something like, I don't know, two. And our grapple layer, we can just set to ground. And then we can just come over to our hierarchy, click on our ceiling, and let's just set that to the ground layer. Okay, perfect. 
Now let's hit play and see if we can actually grapple. So I'm going to click on the ceiling and you can see the player automatically moves into position and he is now hanging from the ceiling. And this is me moving left and right. I unclick the ceiling and let's just click the background. There's no grappling, click the ground. There's no grappling. And if I click the ceiling again, he moves to position and he is swinging. And you can just do this however many times you want. Okay, let's uncheck play and let's add in some sort of a rope. So we have a visual representation of our grappling hook. So let's right click the player and create an empty and let's just call this rope. We're going to be using something called the line renderer and all it's going to do is render a line. So let's add a component line renderer and now we have the line renderer on our rope. So let's go back into our script. And in our script, let's scroll to the top and add another serialized field. And let's just call it private line renderer and let's call it rope. Okay, so in start, let's set our rope dot enabled is false. So we're not drawing our rope right away. And all we need to do is when we can grapple, let's set the ropes positions. So rope dot set position, set position zero to be the grapple point and rope dot set position, position one to be the players transform dot position. So essentially all this is doing is creating a line with one point being the grapple position and the other point being the player's position. So now when we release the mouse button, we are going to say rope.enabled is equal to false. And there is one small problem and that is going to be when we are actually moving from our grappling hook, it's only going to draw the original line from when we first clicked and not update it while we're swinging or when we actually get to our target. So what we have to do is we can just do a quick if statement and say, if rope is enabled, we can just update that position. So we'll just copy this line here and paste it in here and it should work as intended. And we actually forgot to enable the rope as well. So let's enable the rope right before we set the position or we could do it actually right after. So rope dot enabled is equal to true. And this will make sure that our rope is visible when we actually start to grapple. So let's head back into Unity and test it out. Back in Unity, let's click on our player and make sure we scroll down and drag the rope into the rope slot. And now that that's done, let's hit play and test it out. So my player falls and when I click on the ceiling, we now have a rope. It looks pretty disgusting, but it's a rope nonetheless. So all I'm going to do is hit the hotkey, control shift and P, and that's just going to pause it. And I'm going to go into the scene view and let's start adjusting what this rope looks like. So let's click our rope and we can come down here and make the width a lot smaller. And now it's some sort of a string. And then we can come to materials, click the little dot here and select the default line material. And now we have a white rope and we can change the color of this rope to be black. So we just have to click on these little doohickeys on the bottom and make sure it's black and we don't want our gradient. So let's select the other one and make it black as well. Next it out of that and we have a black rope. The next thing we should do is assign some sort of sorting layer. So for the sorting layer, let's select player and on our player sprite we can come up here and select player and give it player one and now the player is visible above the rope and it looks pretty good so all we have to do is click on the rope and right click on the line renderer and copy the component and now when we uncheck play we can simply just paste the component values and it's going to look exactly how it looked before don't worry this is going to be disabled as soon as we hit play or you could even disable it right now. So let's hit play and we should have a nice black rope. We fall down and I click and we have a nice black rope. And I didn't assign the player to be above the rope outside of runtime. So let's do that quickly and hit play. 
And now he is above the rope. So we have a nice little grappling hook. And it's probably not the greatest grappling hook, but it's definitely a starting point. You could use something like animation curves and make this actually wiggle around until it hits the point. You can use some mathematics and some rigid body logic to make the player move a little bit slower to the position or even a little bit faster. And you can adjust all sorts of things on your own. But like I said, this is a very good starting point and probably where I'm going to end the video off. I hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe even learned a thing or two. Don't forget to leave a suggestion in the comments of a game mechanic you want to see. And I'll see you guys next week.